Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Taylor's of Movie Reviews. Today, we're talking about my hype, my expectations, and some of my concerns for the next untitled Avengers film. This could go very well, or this could go very horribly. So, in case you weren't around when we reviewed Infinity War, I really, really liked it, and I was really not expecting to. I was going into that film thinking there's going to be too many characters, the plot's not going to be followable, there's going to be so much going on, and at the end of the day, they're all just going to team up, and they're going to learn that teamwork is important, and they're just going to pull through, and everything will end up fine. But, due to the fact that I don't read the comic books, and I don't know the stories behind most of these plot lines, I went into it with a completely low expectation, and came out of it going, wow, that was really impressive. Expecting to hate a film and having it actually prove you wrong and get to the point where you're feeling for characters that you thought you didn't care about anymore. So overall, what you need to know is I didn't think I would like it. I ended up loving it. So where does that put me now for the next Avengers film? Well, the title's supposed to be announced soon as well as possibly a teaser trailer in the next couple weeks. We don't know for sure about that though. I think the difference with Avengers 4 is I'm going to be going into it with a higher expectation now of this sudden regenerative interest in the franchise because there was a long period of time where I enjoyed Marvel films but I didn't think they were the greatest and I was much more interested in where DC was going and then DC uh, went where they were going so that that interest didn't hang on very long but slowly I realized that Marvel was starting to do a better job at telling stories and keeping it interesting and lighthearted and dark and deep at the same time and I can tell that there's some legitimate passion and legitimate interest that the creators of that franchise have in of those characters so I'm trusting that they're going to be able to do something interesting but I'm also looking at Captain Marvel which I have mixed feelings about I've seen the trailer I know that she's gonna be in the next Avengers but based on what we know about Captain Marvel from that trailer and her involvement in the next Avengers I'm worried that it's just going to become a little bit too overpowered of a character it would be really dumb if the big savior to mankind is just well Captain Marvel shows up and she's so, so powerful that she kills Thanos and then everything's done. I think a big flaw that DC actually stemmed from was characters that were too overpowered, which meant that developing villains became very complicated. And that's what I think the beautiful thing is about each member of the Avengers. They're all fairly powerful, and you can tell that a lot of them, not Black Widow, have significant powers or abilities or technologies that can make them special. Again, not Black Widow. She literally holds a gun and she has spy training. That should not grant her, like, above human levels of superpower whether it be super fancy suit or serum or you're a god. Not sure why she's considered, but anyway. They all have powers that are pretty easily beaten, as Thanos showed us in Infinity War, as he basically just punched through everyone and got exactly what he wanted. He won. But I'm really hoping that it's not as simple as just, well, he wasn't expecting Captain Marvel, who's really strong, and she can just punch right through his brain. But I trust the people in charge. I trust that it's not going to be that silly. But my question is, obviously, how are they going to bring back all of these characters that they so-called killed off. It really sucks to me that they start unveiling future movies and titles and release dates for movies that have not come out yet, especially when we're wondering if those characters are alive. That's why I wish they wouldn't have greenlit the next Spider-Man film or the next Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like, we don't know if there's gonna be another one. Why would you start confirming that kind of stuff? Isn't that kind of a spoiler? From all we know, Spider-Man's gone. But then they go off and announce that they're filming stuff, so obviously that means it's some point in Avengers 4 they're going to bring back likely everyone who died from either Thanos' snap or some type of time travel as we've seen in behind the scenes footage. It looks like they're going back to meet up with the Avengers in the Battle of New York and warn them maybe or tell them to do something differently depending on how Avengers 4 goes but I've read that it could be a time jump you know it takes place several years after the events of Infinity War which I think will be really really fascinating to see an Earth and a planet where half of the population has been wiped out and Honestly, if I could pitch the way I want the movie to go, there's definitely a way um, they could satisfy me. Not saying this is going to happen, this probably won't happen, but in my opinion, what would be absolutely awesome is if somehow, maybe through Tony's digital assistance or his machinery, he's able to get his way back to Earth, and Tony finds out that Pepper dissolved when Thanos snapped. Meaning that the love of his life, the only woman he's ever cared about and sworn to protect throughout his entire life, has died now because he 
failed. And that just sets him off. That's the last straw. No more funny, no more casual Tony Stark. He just decides he's going to use every ounce of his being to defeat Thanos no matter what. Maybe he has to work with Captain America, but honestly, Captain America's powers always seem very fishy to me. He's able to make the shield bounce in any way you can possibly imagine. And then sometimes he's just a really strong guy who can run pretty fast. And other times he'll jump 40 feet in the air. And I'm like, okay, well, how is that possible? I mean, I get that it's steroids, but steroids don't mean you can, like, jump like you're on the moon or something. But anyway, if I had to choose someone who is going to be actually killed off in this next film as kind of a they died trying or kind of a sacrifice that the Avengers have to make, it would be Cap. He's a fairly interesting character, but I feel like his powers are so outspoken compared to Thanos, who was able to stop him basically with one arm. Be like, no, try to hit me, try to hit me. And then he couldn't. I want to see, like, Iron Man in another Hulkbuster outfit, except this one's using nanobot technology, maybe has a ton of Hulkbusters and drones, and he's able to literally just say, I'm going to defeat you, Thanos, and maybe carry in a line from the last film, something like, I hope no one remembers you, and then kills him, because Thanos said to him in the last film, I hope they remember you, he admires him, his mind is cursed with knowledge, and then Iron Man returns the favor and says, no one will remember you. And then he's able to kill him, and there's even some concept art of Iron Man wielding the Infinity Gauntlet, Maybe using the gauntlet, he's able to turn back time before everything happens. And I don't know, they could invent new methods of how everyone comes back from there. But very interested in what Doctor Strange said in Infinity War, saying there's one possible chance of winning. No, it's not the one where Chris Pratt decides to not punch Thanos, where they almost have the gauntlet off his hands. Peter Quill, you kind of ruined everything. No, but there's only one possible reality where everything works out, and apparently this is it. The one reality where everything works out is literally handing Thanos the Infinity Stone. I'm still confused by that, but what does Doctor Strange mean? How come the only way they could have won is if Thanos wins, flicks the finger? Why did that need to happen? Why couldn't Chris Pratt just not punch Thanos repeatedly in the face and then they could just get the gauntlet off? I feel like they almost had it, but I know that they're probably not going to do my exact wishes. I just thought I would tell you what I would like to happen. Obviously, I'm sure there's going to have to be some type of teamwork. Maybe they could throw Ant-Man in Thanos' ear and then he could get big again and just blow up his head. And I think there's plenty of simple ways they could defeat Thanos because I'm not sure if he's like godlike to where it's impossible to kill him, but at the same time, he did bleed. And the only Avenger to get Thanos to bleed was Iron Man. Meaning that maybe if Iron Man worked with the people of Wakanda and they could get Vibranium involved, after watching Black Panther again, I feel like you can just slap Vibranium on anything and it will suddenly make it invincible. So why not get Iron Man and Vibranium together, make some type of super Iron Man suit and defeat Thanos with that, you know, because I feel like we've established that Thor is hopeless against Thanos. There's not much he can do. He's got a new axe with Groot's arm on it, but really that should just be used for transportation. It should get Iron Man back to Earth, and then it should get all the Avengers to wherever Thanos is using the Bifrost. Other than that, though, I'm sure the hammer can hurt Thanos quite a bit, given that last minute in Infinity War when Thor chucks it right into his chest. By the way, Thor, yes, you should have aimed for the head. Or at least the arm. That would have at least cut the circulation to his hand off. So I suppose Thor does have a chance as well. Maybe Thor and Iron Man working primarily together. I just don't see the point of throwing a shield at Thanos. I feel like he'd slap it away like a frisbee. I'm sure Captain Marvel's gonna be worked in there as well, but I don't know. I feel like because my expectations are higher now, I might not enjoy the film because I'm expecting too much and I want an appropriate closure to all of these characters as a lot of their contracts are ending with this film. So what do you guys think for expectations for your hype for Avengers Infinity War? Part 2 or whatever it ends up being called. You expecting to like it? You think it's going to be amazing? and exceed my expectations and your expectations or is it going to be mild is it going to be average all that good stuff let me know in the comments below thank you guys for watching and i hope you have an excellent day take care